These days, I'm sure you've noticed that there's a lot of discussion about the news media and how they do their job. Some people say the media is biased, in other words, that the stories aren't fair. Now, being fair is at the core of a journalist's job description. They are supposed to report the facts in a neutral way so that we can all be better informed about what's really going on in the world. If they're not being fair, that's a problem. Are the critics right? Is the media biased? Or should we believe the folks who say those critics just don't like the facts that are being reported? Well, rather than take just anyone's word for it, we want you to develop your very own fairness meter. If we all keep an eye out for a few key things, we can measure for ourselves just how straight up or slanted a story is. Before I show you the components that make up your fairness meter, I know what some of you are thinking. This sounds like a lot of work. Can't you just cut to the chase and tell us who's fair and who's not? Nope, we can't. No one can. Like so many issues in the information universe, it's impossible to live by blanket rules when it comes to fairness. If you assume that one news provider is always biased and another one never is, well, sooner or later, those assumptions are going to let you down. Instead, you need to be tuned in to the content of the news stories that interest you and run them through your fairness filter. All it takes is a simple three-step check. The first thing you need to check for, word choice. You need to consider whether the story simply presents the facts or if it leads you to make judgments about them. The words used in a fair news story help you get a clear picture of what's happening, but don't push you to feel a certain way about it. For example, a FAIR article might say the school superintendent used her personal connections to get board members to support her initiative. The author is using pretty neutral language. A less FAIR story might say that the superintendent shoved her pet project through the approval process. When the author chooses leading language like shoved or pet project, they put a spin on what happened. Instead of just informing you, these kinds of choices push you to make positive or negative judgments about what happened. When you're evaluating word choice, be on the lookout for adjectives or verbs that go beyond just describing what happened, or for patterns of very positive or very negative descriptions. The more you find, the less fair the story is. Now, it's time for the second check, context. This is where you consider whether the story is showing you the big picture of what's going on, or just a slice. A fair news story provides additional facts and details that deepen your understanding of what happened. For example, a fair news story might let you know that the city's new transportation manager got a PhD in urban planning and ran a private limo company. Those facts provide important context because they help you understand that person's qualifications and how they might approach the job. The author shows you more of the big picture by looking into the past and sharing relevant details. A less fair story might leave those bits out giving you a smaller slice of the big picture. When you're evaluating a news story for context, look for comparisons to similar incidents from history or additional background about the sources of information. Look for facts about related issues or individuals and look for data, hard numbers that help paint a more detailed picture of what's going on. In general, more context means broader understanding and that means a more fair story. But a note of caution here, if there's lots of context, but it all seems to back up one specific viewpoint, the story might not be so fair after all. That's where our third check comes in, counterpoints. A fair news story helps you understand more than one perspective. It does that by providing counterpoints, arguments that balance out the story, helping you understand how multiple groups or individuals understand what's going on. For example, a fair news story about a new tax bill says that supporters say it's going to increase funding for education, point, but also says that critics say it puts the burden on the middle class, counterpoint. A less fair article might focus only on one of those sides. So it might rave about how funding could help local schools, or it could rant about how middle class families can't afford to pay any more in taxes. Either way, it's not providing the counterpoints you need to fully understand the issue. When you're evaluating a news story for counterpoints, look for responses to key claims or conclusions. Does it give you multiple perspectives on what's going on? You should also look for responses to accusations. In other words, if the author says someone did something, does the author also give that person a chance to respond to the claims? In the end, the line between fair and biased is not always clear. 
many articles land somewhere in the middle. Maybe they have neutral language and lots of counterpoints, but not enough context to see the big picture. Or maybe they have deep context, but focus on a single viewpoint. Ultimately, more important than just branding a news story fair or biased is understanding that the way a story is reported can shape our conclusions about the issues. That's why fairness matters. If we consider the word choices, context, and counterpoints in the information we consume, we're more likely to get a good sampling of all the information we need to make our own judgments about the issues.